With high crimes, you take readers inside how a court martial actually works. Where did that idea first come to you? It actually started with the, the, sto the story behind high crimes started with a friend of mine, this woman who came over one day and told us that she had found a driver's license that belonged to her husband and it was a different name. And she said, I mean, I don't even know who this guy is. And I heard this and I just sort of thought, wow, what, what if this happened to one of my characters where her, a woman's husband is somebody who she didn't know, who has sort of a secret life. I thought that would be really cool to write about. Uh, and the, as I began to sort of cook the story and think about, think about it more and more, I thought, let's go with this idea of a marriage, a woman who's married to a guy who's accused of something terrible, an atrocity, um, and yet believes he's innocent. What kind of courtroom could that happen in? And I wanted it to be a kind of place where that involved secret intelligence, which would not happen in a regular courtroom. It would have to be a court martial. So I went to a number of court martials and watched them, took notes. And in fact, this one judge sort of recognized me after three different court martials I've been to. And, she, and she, during a break, she said, called me up and said, who are you and what are you doing? You know, you're allowed to go to court martials, they're public. So I went to a bunch of these and then the, the best thing I did was I talked to lawyers who had done court martials, either as defense or as prosecution and talk to them. And, and it's, I said, so tell me about some great moments. Tell me about things that I wouldn't expect. And so some of the best moments in my courtroom scenes happened from talking to these people who had done court martials before. So um, I ran through my scenarios. I had my experts read sections to make sure they were right. You know, because what do I know about military justice? Do you do that a lot? Yeah, I do. And it's because I love learning about new worlds. I sort of love learning new things. I want to write, when I write scenes that I've, that I've done by doing research, I want my sources to feel that I've been accurate. And yet at the same time, I'm writing fiction. So fiction always sort of pushes the boundaries. And so there would be things that happen in my novels that wouldn't happen in real life but are exciting and could happen. What was it like when you found out that Morgan Freeman and Ashley Judd and Jim Caviezel and so many other great actors are gonna be playing these characters you invented in your head on the silver screen? I had had a couple of my books optioned. And when you're young and you're starting out, you sort of believe that an option means you're gonna have a movie made, <laughs> right? And as you get older and you go through it, you, you have experience, you realize it doesn't work that way. You know, lots of books are optioned. Very few are made into movies. Uh, so my, so High Crimes was optioned. And my agent said to me, I just have a feeling this is going to be made into a movie. This is going to, I said, yeah, yeah, I'll believe it when, when, when it's green lit. You tell me when it's green lit, <laughs> right? When it, which means they give, give you the official go ahead to start making the movie. And um, uh, so I, um, I remember one day uh, my agent called up and said, I think this is going to happen. And I said, yeah, right. I said, if it's, if it's going to happen, I want to, I want a cameo. Okay. I would like to be in this movie. And he said, Joe, you, you're the writer. It doesn't happen that way. It's rare that it happens. I said, Hitchcock, Hitchcock put himself in every one of his movies. Joe, you're not Hitchcock. <laughs> yeah, Hitchcock was the boss. He was the director. So anyway, there was a time when they called up and they said, um, this is basically a project that is, there are people are circling in Hollywood and we have a director. And I said, yeah, right. And then they called up and they said that Morgan Freeman was cast in the role. The thing is, I cast Morgan Freeman in that role when I was writing the book. I had a picture of Morgan Freeman up on my wall while I was writing. And then I had his voice in my head. So when they decided that Morgan Freeman was gonna be in it, I just sort of thought, this is beyond cool. This is amazing. Um, 
I, at first they had, I had no input uh, in the screenplay. I sort of talked to the screenwriters a number of times. They asked me questions. Uh, but then um, my agent called up and said, the, the director is willing to put, give you a cameo. And they flew me out there and I uh, uh, talked to the director and they instantly promoted me from being a member of the jury. That was my first, that was, that was the first cameo I was gonna play to being a prosecutor, to being a member of the prosecution team. So I hung out, I was on the set for five days and um, the, the director, um, Carl Franklin, his name was, um, called me aside once and said, I'm getting all these notes from the studio. They want to have a new scene with Ashley and, and Morgan. And can you help me out here? Because I'm frazzled. And we sort of sat there and brainstormed and came up with some ideas for a scene. So I, had, I did have a, some serious input in the movie as it turned out. How it cool. is amazing, though, I got to say, I wrote that book sitting by myself, you know, working on a computer, one guy in a room, to all of a sudden have basically 500 people involved in producing this movie. Uh, and, uh, it, it, and the sets were based on the sets that I described in my book. I mean, they read my book and took notes and created the set. So I sat there and I, I, I took a tour of the, of the brig of where, the, the, my, where Claire's husband was imprisoned. And it was just like I described it in my book. Uh, it's, it's really cool. I mean, people say, so how does it feel to have your book brought to life? And I sort of think, no, actually it was brought to life when I wrote it, you know? Um, but it's amazing to see it happen as a movie because you're seeing someone else's interpretation of the story. Did you have a similar experience with paranoia? Yeah, well, different experience. Please share. Okay. Um, Thank you again. <laughs> with paranoia, the producers did not want me involved and they were pretty dead set against that. They did not want me to have a cameo. They did not want me to read the screenplay. They wanted to keep me out of it. A lot of people in Hollywood are afraid of the writer, you know? And the writer of a book is someone who can only be trouble to them. So um, they, uh, they did let me come visit the set. So I was able to visit the set and meet the actors. I met Harrison Ford, I met Gary Oldman, Amber Heard, uh, Liam Hemsworth and talk to them for a bit. And that was exciting. But you know, the movie that they made was really different from the book that I wrote. Some people liked the movie, I really disliked it, I gotta tell you. Way before you saw Harrison Ford and Gary Oldman turn another of your bestsellers, Paranoia, into a blockbuster, where did you first get the idea for a dot-com setting? That was a really cool one. I really wanted to shake things up again, you know? And I sort of thought, why don't I do a character who's young, hates his job, doesn't love his job, hates his job, kind of sardonic, and do it in his, tell the book in his voice. So I really, the, the voice of paranoia is different from the voice of my earlier ones, where it's the, the narrator and it's sort of an omniscient narrator. In the case of paranoia, it's the voice of this guy who, who, as I said, hates his job, but becomes endearing to us as he goes through his adventures and has a real, you know, has a struggle with his father whom he really dislikes. Um, so I wanted to write something that, yeah, was different. Um, I also sort of, in a sense, psychoanalyzed Adam. I sort of thought, okay, he has, his father is a jerk. He's probably going to be looking for a father figure. And that was sort of behind, I didn't put this in the book, but that was sort of behind his going to work for the CEO of this new company that he's basically spying on. Uh, and beginning to really admire this guy. And, he, and it's because of his psychological background. Uh, so that's sort of how paranoia came to birth, really.